Good morning, everyone. This week's Torah portion, Yaakov faces his brother Esav, who is to kill him and his family. And our rabbis have studied this week's Torah portion to learn what is the Jewish approach to dealing with an enemy who seeks your destruction. And we find that Yaakov does three things. The first thing is he prepares his family for battle. He is prepared to wage war to defend and protect his family. The second thing he does is sends gifts and presents to try to appease and win over the heart of his brother. And finally, he turns to God in prayer. And the rabbis say this is the way a Jew deals with enemies. The first thing is we are ready to fight, to defend and protect our loved ones. The second thing is we try to use diplomacy by sending gifts the way Jacob did to try to make peace. And then, of course, we turn to God in heartfelt prayer. And this is what the Jewish people are doing today, of course. The three-prong approach that has been tested and proven all the way back from 3,000 years ago, from the days of Jacob, who successfully made peace with his brother. But when Jacob faces his brother Esav, the verse says, Vayira Yaakov mi'o. Jacob was very frightened and fearful. And then the verse adds, Vayetzalo, and he was distressed. And Rashi asks, what does it mean he was afraid and distressed? Usually being afraid means you're distressed. And Rashi gives his classic answer that he said, this is a lose-lose situation because I'm afraid lest my brother kill me or my family members. And I'm distressed lest I kill him. Even if I win, I'm distressed that I will have to kill my brother. And this is true of the Jewish people till today. When we go to war, of course, the most important thing is we don't want to be harmed, God forbid. But the fact that we have to kill others is also distressful. As Golda Meir famously said that when peace will come, we can forgive the Arabs for killing our children, but we can never forgive them for making our children kill their children. I don't believe that we can forgive them for killing our children, but I do agree that having our children have to go to war is something that is antithesis, an anomaly to our way of life. However, there's another interpretation given by the Nitziv, and he says, Vayira Yaakov, Jacob was afraid, Vayetzalo, he was distressed over the fact that he was frightened. Why? Because God had promised him some 20 years earlier that I will go with you on the way, I will watch over you, I'll protect you, and you'll return in peace to your father's home. And so when he experienced the emotion of fear, it distressed him that he was fearful because he said, I shouldn't be fearful. I should have faith and confidence in Hashem. And that's the way a Jew goes to battle. A Jew goes to battle with a victory march. A Jew goes to battle with faith and trust and confidence. And as the Talmud says, even if a sword is upon your neck, you should never give up hope. You should never lose your faith and your trust in God. Something very remarkable happened yesterday. You know, when the terrible events of October 7th occurred, there was a little girl by the name of Emily Hand who was abducted. And her father was told, her father Thomas was told, the report came in that his daughter was killed. And when he heard the news that his daughter was killed by the terrorists, he said, yes, that's a blessing. Better she should not have to suffer in the hands of these terrorists. And he was weeping, but he was happy to learn that she was dead. Well, a few weeks later, they discovered that she's actually alive and being held captive. And yesterday, the world witnessed the way little Emily was reunited with her father with a loving, joyous embrace. And when you see this father and daughter re reunited again, and he is experiencing something he never thought would ever happen. He had believed his daughter had died. It reminds me of Jacob who said to Joseph, I never thought I would see your face again. And here you are, I got to see you and your children. And God willing, Thomas will get to see Emily grow up and God willing, see grandchildren. And it teaches us a very important lesson. No matter how bleak, how black, how dim, how terrible a situation may seem, never give up hope. There is always hope, there is always faith, there is always trust because God could perform miracles. And therefore, try not to be frightened but be faithful that things will end with God's blessing and we will see each and every one of the hostages return to their families in love and joy. Have a wonderful day.